यस फ्रेंड्स नाउ वी विल डिस्कस अबाउट पाइप एंड सॉकेट ए पी आईज सो लेट्स स्टार्ट हेयर वी गो मैसेज पासिंग कम्युनिकेशन कैन ऑल्सो भी अचीव थ्रू अ वेल डिफाइंड सेट ऑफ स्टैंडर्ड एप्लीकेशन प्रोग्राम इंटरफेस ए पी आईज ए पी आई स्टैंड फॉर एप्लीकेशन प्रोग्राम इंटरफेस द पाइप एंड सॉकेट आर टू इंटर प्रोसेस कम्युनिकेशन ए पी आईज दैट आर वाइडली यूज इन बोथ द यूनिक्स एंड विंडोज एनवायरमेंट्स a user process uh, sees the communication channel as presented by the api the internal structure and detail capacity of the channel and synchronization of memory access are managed by the kernel and and are transparent to the users a pipe serves as an uni unidirectional communication link having having head and tail and one one processes one process one process can write data into the tail and another process may read from the head end of the pipe <coughs> according to diagram okay right fifo pipe read right pipe communication so pipes are implemented uh, with a finite size fifo <coughs> fifo byte system buffer maintained by the kernel a pipe is created by a pipe system Call, pipe system call which return which return two pipe descriptors one for reading and other for writing data in pipes are uninterrupted byte sequences untyped the way of piping between two processes is that one process create the pipe for the other process close the read end of the pipe for the parent process and close the write end of the pipe for the child process ordinary read and write operations are used in one way data flow through pipe a pipe exists only for the time period when both reader and writer processes are active so when structured data example variable length messages are used in the channel the pipe concept is extended to include messages queue thus the pipe is used only for related processes the read and write process run concurrently as pipe is an internal data structure maintained by the kernel next named pipe for unrelated processes the kernel pipe data structure are used with a special fifo first in first out fifo file that are uniquely identified by path names these pipes with a path name are called named pipes they can be shared among disjoint processes across different machines with a common file system the communicating processes does not need to exist concurrently the named pipes are created by an open statement before access can be made to the fifo files the pipes and named pipes are realizations of the classical producer and consumer ipc problem the mutual exclusion for accessing the buffer and conditional coordination whether sorry when the buffer is full or empty are the major uses the use of named pipes is limited to a single domain within a common file system to achieve a inter domain process communication we need on ipc api running on the top of the transport services <coughs> two common intertermin ipc apis are berkeley socket and the system transport layer interface tli transport layer interface okay tli next socket api a socket is a communication and points of communication link managed by the transport services the abstraction of network input output as file input output increases access transparency in the socket system model so a socket is created by socket system call that returns a socket descriptor for network input output operation file oriented read write and communication specific send receive the socket system call specifies various network protocol like the internal tcp utp and ip now tcp tcp is a uh, is a connection oriented reliable stream transport protocol udp udp is a connection less unreliable datagram transport protocol ip transmits raw data pa packets and is connection less network layer protocol 
okay interprocess communication consists of transmitting a message between a socket in the in one process and a socket in another process okay according to diagram a socket descriptor is a logical communication endpoint <coughs> LCE that is local to a process and associated with a physical communication endpoint for data transfer. A PCE is specified by a network host address and transport and transport port pair. The linking of LCE with the PC is done by the bind system call. So before discussing connectionless and connection oriented socket communication, we concentrate on the socket primitives for TCP connection oriented. Okay, we pay attention to table primitives and meaning. First socket, create a new communication and endpoint. Second, second bind, attach a local address to a socket. Next, listen. Announce willingness to accept connections. <coughs> Next, accept block caller <coughs> until a connections request arrives. Next, connect. Actively attempt to establish a connection. Send. Send some data over the connection. Receive. Receive some data over the connection. Close. Release the connection. Release the connection. Sorry. So you can uh, pay attention here once again primitives and meaning primitives are socket mind listen accept connect send receive and close right the socket primitives for TCP IP okay next Next figure shows next figure shows an example of connection less peer communication using socket bind and send to receive from socket calls. In this type of socket communication, each peer process must known its remote PC. A connection socket call binds a local LCE to its remote PC. It it uses it, its uses is uh, its uses is optional, right? After using the connect operation, data transfer can be done by send receive or read or write read without specifying the remote PCE. Okay, here you can pay attention. Peer process, logical communication endpoint, socket LCE, bind, physical communication endpoint, socket PCE, peer process, logical communication endpoint, socket LCE, physical communication endpoint, socket PCE. Okay. Send to send to or receive from connectionless socket communication. Next next figure illustrates a connection oriented client server socket communication. Here a server has a well known PCEs and communicates with multiple client having unknown PCE. Client clients issue a connect call to the server which rendezvous with a client's request using an accept. And establish a connection with the clients so you can pay attention here to the diagram server socket bind listen accept read write clause here socket connect write read close okay so here connection oriented client server socket communication okay you can pay attention here this is close right after the close Okay, C L O S E. Next, <coughs> secure socket. A standard window socket, uh, Winsock, has been developed by the Winsock Standard Group, which is a uh, derivation by of the Berkeley socket. Right, uh, it has an extended set of APIs to provide complete transport transparency by using an abstract service provider interface that provides plug-in compatibility for transfer protocols. The recent version having secure socket uh, layer SSL provides privacy in socket communication by using symmetric cryptographic data encryption, integrity in socket data by using message integrity check, 
authenticity of servers and clients by using an asymmetric public key cryptography. The heart of the SSL includes two protocol layers, a uh, handshake protocol, a record layer protocol. Okay, next handshake, handshake protocol. So uh, next uh, handshake protocol, okay. So we will discuss uh, handshake protocol and record layer protocol in next video, right? In this video, we discussed about <coughs> pipe and socket APIs, okay. Named pipe uh, we have discussed, okay, and. Uh, uh, socket api tcp udp ip okay we have discussed we have discussed the uh, socket uh, primitives for tcp ip okay you can pay attention to the table you can pay attention to the table okay next uh, we paid attention to uh, connection loss socket communication okay and uh, next we discussed secure socket okay so in next video we will discuss handshake protocol and record layer protocol till then nice being with you thank you thank you very much